back to my channel. We have a old series that is making its comeback here on the Lone Fox channel. This is a series known as What Would Drew Do? I think I did about seven episodes of this before I purchased my home. Then when I purchased my house, we got into so many renovations. So if you are new here, we have been making over my 1929 Spanish home over the past probably year and a half on the channel. And before that, I was in an apartment. I had already made over all my spaces. So I had this series, What Would Drew Do? Where I basically help you guys with your decor dilemma. And I'm finally ready to introduce this back on the channel, which I am so excited about. So if you want to submit your space for what would Drew do, I actually have a link below. It'll take you to my website and it just has some criteria on what you need to submit in order to have your space potentially chosen for an episode like this. But today we have some great spaces sent over by you, the Lone Fox family. A little disclaimer I like to put at the beginning of these videos is that these are 100% my own ideas and I'm just sharing with you some things you could do. You could take one of these ideas, you could take none of them. You could do all of them if you wanted to, but always know that your space is your space and you can do whatever you want to it. So do not also feel like you have to do anything I say, buy anything I say. It's just all for inspiration. And one little announcement before jumping on into our first space is that over on Lone Fox next Sunday, so a week from today on the 3rd, March 3rd, we are having our vintage drop. So I think it's vintage drop number six. If you're in the market for any vintage or antique little decor elements or additions, we have everything kind of ranging from decor to studio studio pottery to art to frames, paintings. And our last drop was in October. So it has been many months. So you guys know I've been collecting up for this one. It is 10 a.m. on LoneFox.com on March 3rd, next Sunday. Our first space is for Lone Fox family member Marika, and she sent over a video, so let me share that with you. Hey Drew, my name is Marika. I am a graphic designer. I live in Atlanta with my husband and my cat. We just bought this 1981 house a year ago, and we're finally starting to try to decorate the principal bedroom. It's a little bit of a weird space because it's one of those principal bedrooms that has room for like a sitting room. So we have our bed on one side, and we just added this couch on the other side. Um, but it's very long and skinny, and we don't really know what to do with the like sitting room area because we don't necessarily have people over in our bedroom that we want to sit around and talk with. So if you can help us figure out how to make this space like cozy and cohesive and feel less like cut in half, uh, I would love it. Thank you so much. I'm excited to see what you do. So first of all, Marika, when I saw this room with like kind of like the connecting room and the cased opening, I just wanted to make this over because I instantly saw a vision for what this could be. The sitting room in your bedroom isn't really meant to be a sitting room for other people to come in and sit at. It's just more so a space for you. Like if you were, I don't know, folding laundry or something, you wanted to bring everything in, you wanted to kind of relax in your room, maybe do some work on the computer. That's kind of like what I created in my room, the little office nook that's right off mine. It's an area that doesn't have to be in my room, but I'm able to work and it's somewhat connected. So I actually love the kind of floor plan you have here, but let me share with you some of the ideas I have. We're going to start with the sitting room in the back, which I still do want to kind of keep as a sitting room slash office workspace combo. And I was thinking it would be really fun fun to wallpaper this room so that it kind of has its own differentiation from the bedroom. And we're gonna be pulling a color from the wallpaper in the sitting room to then paint the bedroom so everything feels cohesive. Love the scale of this pattern, how it's not too small, it's not too large. Also in both of these spaces, I definitely wanna add a rug. So for the sitting room, I opted for this rug right here. And all the rugs I selected were from Laloy. I love, love, love my Laloy rugs. As you guys know, I use them in all of my projects. And then I was thinking for the bedroom, we can opt for something a little different that is a little bit more vintage inspired. Love these ones, the printed styled ones from Laloy. They're also super affordable, which is great. Now to fill up the sitting room area, I decided to put a little desk in the corner and I thought a desk in the corner would be kind of nice because it faces out into the bedroom. You can also pop a little chair behind there and this could be kind of a floating workspace. And I got the idea from this from a Jake Arnold space. He did one that has this corner desk and it's kind of floating in the corner. And I just love the way that that looked in there. So I wanted to pop this over in the corner. And then to the right of that, we're going to be doing two two different chairs. So you don't have one long sofa because I also kind of agree in a sitting area for yourself, like in your bedroom, it's kind of nice to have chairs as opposed to sofas, just because a sofa kind of feels like you're inviting more people in. Chairs feel more quaint. So even having two or three of them to the right of the desk, we added those two chairs. And then in between, I added this iron side table just to add a little bit of contrast in the mix of materials that we're using. The wallpaper is really floral and kind of cutesy. And then we're adding a mix of harshness with the 
iron side table. I think the light I sourced for this room is from CB2. It's so cool though. I've been wanting to use this in a space. It's like a twisted frame with a blown melt glass orb on the inside. I thought we could hang this over in the seating area and just kind of have a cute light hanging over there. So for this bedroom, we are using a paint color that I am going to be painting these walls in my bedroom very shortly. Now there's a little bit of a leak in the walls, hence why I haven't started my bedroom makeover. You'll hear all about that in the first episode. Until then, we are going to be painting your room tallow as well from Pharaoh and Ball. It's a really pretty kind of milky, creamy yellow color. I also forgot to talk about curtains. I found some chocolate brown ones that I thought would add a great contrast. Everything in this room kind of is on the lighter side in color. Hanging some draperies in a dark chocolate brown would add some darkness and contrast. I love the placement of the bed in the room. So I was actually thinking of maybe just adding an additional headboard either over the top of the current one or removing the current headboard, like cutting it off and just using the frame and then adding this headboard that I found from Urban Outfitters. I think it's really going to elevate this bed. It's going to make it almost feel like one solid custom feeling bed that was upholstered on the headboard and on either side of the bed, two of my favorite nightstands. I tend to always use this nightstand in particular in spaces. I feel like for the price point, it is substantial. It can also really fit any design style. It's super neutral and the wood tone is really warm and pretty. Something that I did in my bedroom, which you guys can kind of see here, is I actually had some lights installed above the nightstands and I don't necessarily want to do this in this space. However, installing sconces just above the nightstands is pretty easy, especially if you have an electrical source on the back of your wall. Hiring someone to come out and add electrical on either side of the nightstand is not too bad and it really gives you that custom feel. So for lighting in this room, I thought two sconces above each nightstand would free up a little bit of space on those nightstands and I also thought since the room's so large, kind of adding another element to that wall would be nice. They kind of have a ceramic back and then they have a linen shade as well. And then over the top of the bed, pulling in a little bit of that iron, but in a daintier feel with the chandelier. I love a simple and traditional candlestick chandelier. I think this one looks great in the space. And to finish off the room, a little oil painting above the bed would be so cute. And then right in front of the bed, a little elm bench. I love the way that these look. They add a bit of warmth. They're also kind of structural and cute at the same time. That is how I would transform this space. So Marika, I really hope that you like this room. It definitely has that Lone Fox feel to it, I'd say. And I hope that it gives you a little bit of inspo or direction on where you can take that space. But if anything, I totally feel like you should wallpaper one of the rooms and then pull a accent color from that wallpaper and paint the opposite so they almost feel a little bit more meshed together, but still their own individual spaces. <laughs> This next space we are designing is for a Lone Fox family member, Amanda, and she actually sent over some photos. And when I saw these photos of the room, I just loved the wood paneling. You guys know that I love wood paneling right now. I just did my entire office in a DIY wood paneling. And when I saw she had the sitting area right when you walk in her home. So it needs to first of all, be really kind of like an entry moment and how there was wood paneling. It has this vaulted ceiling. It was everything I wanted to work with as a base. And I saw so much potential. She did send over a little video Video, so let me share it with you. This is the space that um, I need some help with. As you can probably tell, it's a long, long space. This is kind of the view from as soon as you walk in the door. Um, there was an add-in, so this was the main house and it was built on in the 70s, 80s maybe. I'm trying to make it into like a seating area, but we don't ever use it. We want something we can actually use. Uh, vaulted ceilings though. Anything that can make this space a little bit more bright and welcoming because it is once again something you see as soon as you walk in our main door. I'll flip around so you can kind of see our kitchens over here. This room has everything I love. It has an interesting ceiling line. It has wood paneling. It's kind of open. It has brick. It has a fireplace. Like it's a kind of mid-century feeling. I love everything about this space. Now for this room, I'm going to be using this before here. And as you can see on the left wall, it's currently blank because I believe this is where she mentioned they had the addition. So the wood paneling doesn't match up. But I actually thought filling this wall that's open with a mural would really accent so nicely the wood paneling, especially if it kind of has some of those warm tones throughout the mural and it would almost feel purposeful as opposed to just having that being a randomly painted section. On the back wall there, I would definitely remove that mirror above the mantle. And because you already have that really pretty wood paneling on the back, I would go ahead and on top of that, add a few shelves. And I think if you kind of created some dividers at random widths that created this more almost funky shelving system on the top there, add books, whatever you want to add in there. Plus when you walk into the space, first thing you're going to notice is that big shelving unit above that fireplace 
fireplace, it's gonna draw your eye up and make the space look even more grand than it is. I wanted to have a little fun in here, so I thought we can do four kind of chunky shearling style chairs in this space, all centered around a marble style coffee table. And I just love the feel of four big armchairs centered around the table. I've never gotten the opportunity to sit at something like this. So I thought if we mixed up and made it not feel like a traditional living room, but more of an intentional sitting room, almost like a game area, it'd be really cute. So I did four chairs around the coffee table. Underneath all of this is going to be this large kind of blue toned plaid rug. I thought this was super pretty, especially to go underneath. It almost gives a cabin feel channeled with the wood paneling, but we're going to mix in some other elements so it doesn't feel too cabin-y. On the right wall, I'm adding a big piece of art from Decenio and I love that because Desenio has incredible art prints. They are really affordable as well. So I thought this colorful option just added an unexpected pop to this room that you wouldn't really think of adding. But I think the last thing in this room is a light fixture, which I actually found this one on Etsy. It is a vintage, I think either Swedish or Danish style light fixture, but I think adding a vintage light fixture to this room, I feel like it'd feel very authentic and period appropriate for the house, um, but mixing in some of the other elements that we did really kind of modernize it. So Amanda, this is how we transformed your room from this to to this and I feel like this room is so cozy it's so different kind of has a funky feel to it a bit retro at the same time which I love but this is a room I can totally see myself going for coffee in the morning a cocktail in the evening imagine a record player over on like a little side table in here too it would be so nice really setting the ambiance our third and final space was sent in by Lone Fox family member Manveer, and she is from Canada, and she of course also sent over a video of her space, so I'm gonna play that for you guys right now. Hi Drew, my name is Manveer, and I'm from Calgary, Canada. Um, I'm sending you a video from for my family room. If you want me to change the furniture around, I can do that as well. So it has really tall ceilings. I don't want to change this media unit because it's stuck to the wall. And I have this. And yeah, if you can help me to do that. Um, I love your channels. This room is so big, so beautiful. I love how high this ceilings are, the windows, a little vault in the ceiling. These are just going to give you food for thought. And if you want to incorporate any of these, I definitely feel like the first one I'm going to talk about would make the biggest and most impactful element in this space. This room is so massive. It's so open and large. And especially with that white ceiling, that vault almost gets lost because it is kind of a shallow vault. And because of that, I actually don't think it would be super insane of a price point to also have that wood panel just because it's not super steep. It's not like an extremely challenging area to wood panel, but I really do feel like adding warmth to the ceiling will overall make this living room feel so much more cozy. That's definitely an investment, but do also keep in mind, you can do a DIY or have someone do it for you where they use wood floors. So it's not as expensive. You can get the exact color that you want to go with. Even just some simple faux beams on that ceiling would be so stunning. So they have beams that are literally created out of foam that you can have someone come and install. And because they're on the ceiling, you never touch them. They look like a thousand pound wood beams, but they're completely crafted out of foam. And because this living room is so large, I would actually take the current chandelier, which is in the center and kind of small, and I would break it up and actually do two chandeliers in here, drop one above kind of the couch area, and then drop one over on the left, kind of above the TV area. And Manveer, we have to move all of your furniture and your rug just like six feet forward. Like if you took your current setup and just moved it forward a little bit, it would first of all, just feel a lot better in that space. It's just too far back against that wall. And I'm sure also when you're watching TV, you probably feel just kind of disconnected and far away from it. I popped on the opposite side two accent chairs, which are also for seating. And of course, underneath all of this is going to be a large rug. And I opted for a jute rug to pull in some of that warmth from the wood ceiling above, kind of pulling that down. This one is from my website and Laloy. I love this one. It's such a beautiful one. It could be an indoor or an outdoor, which is great. I found a substantial coffee table to add into the middle of this room, also channeling the wood from the ceiling above. So kind of bringing that tone down and mixing it throughout the room. That way it feels more intentional and you're also just making the space feel overall cohesive. In front of the coffee table, I also added two additional poofs for seating. And I completely forgot to mention that we are painting this room. We are going to be painting this room French Grey by Pharaoh and Ball because I think nice kind of light 
grayish green tone. I almost feel like this room is just too large to be white, and so this French gray color would be such a beautiful tone to paint everything in the room. So all of the walls, I'd probably even put it on the windows. I do know that in the rendering, the guy left the windows white. And where the TV is on the wall currently, on that back wall opposite of it, I actually want to do a large framed mural. So this was a DIY project that I did for the Sonza family makeover in their living room, and I used a $300 Wayfair mural. I framed it out in some wood, but it ended up looking like an absolutely massive, like just breathtaking piece of art on the wall. And I thought we can do the same thing to fill up that back wall. Of course, floor to ceiling curtains on those windows as well. We cannot forget about that. And my last little addition that I want to do in here, if you can, would be to add some more sconce lighting. This room is just so large that I think it could really use for some wall lighting as well. It'd be such a beautiful room also to just leave the sconce lighting on at night when you're watching TV. So it kind of creates an ambiance. I would do two sconce just on either side of the TV and then on that back wall just on either side of the art and I selected this kind of iron frame with a really pretty linen shade on the top there. So Menvar, this is how I took your current living room from this and turned it into something like this and I think it looks so so beautiful. This is such a stunning living room. The wood ceiling especially in the rendering totally changes the way that the space feels before. I mean completely changes it and I love the wall color. Also do feel like though what I could have done in this room room, add a big tree in that back corner, like that back left corner, just a big tree, whether it be faux, whether it be real, needs a plant in here, but I completely forgot about that. Those are all three of our makeovers. I hope that you guys loved this episode of What Would Drew Do? And if you guys have any decor dilemmas, do not forget to submit them to me. You can always submit your space for What Would Drew Do? I would love to do more of these. So if you guys would like more of these and you love this type of video, please give it a big thumbs up and let me know in the comment section below. I'd also love to know out of the three spaces, which was your favorite. And last but not least, do not forget next Sunday, March 3rd at 10 a.m. is our next vintage drop. I've been saving up for months, so you don't want to miss out on this one. Over on LoneFox.com, orders over 99 ship for free, so it's going to be a good day next Sunday. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>